Ayo, so shut the <laughs> up. If I practice celibacy, take periodic walks around some trees, and occasionally allude to a higher consciousness guiding my actions, that doesn't mean I suddenly turn into Monkey Yatsu. <laughs> so, Illuminati is an idiot. And I don't mean in the way Terrence Howard is an idiot, because Terrence at least tries to be smart, so just thinks he's smart. And therein lies our problem. He just thinks. And he doesn't do anything but think. I don't subscribe to any figurehead in any type of community or place, and I always take what people say, especially large content creators, with a grain of salt because more often than not, they speak on what they feel and believe and not what they know or what has been written ill-informed. Because of this, despite the intentions to try and spread your knowledge, you end up damaging the minds of the people you wish to inspire because of such skewed perceptions and unintelligible positions. Which is why I quote, those that strictly know what's relevant to them talk only to be heard and not understood. For if they wish to be understood, then upon hearing the sounds of their own voice, they'd soon realize that their silence brings the world's greater knowledge than they could ever hope to achieve. I think about this quote often not just because it hits the nail on the head with many of the problems many content creators exacerbate by way of talking about said problems, but I think about it a lot because I made it up. We all know reading is a practice many people in these popular content creator spaces don't do for fun. Because of a lack of time or commitment, it isn't a necessity to learn things that do not directly benefit you in this day and age. I think there's an ever-growing prevalence of why the books many of these finance bros, influencers, podcasters recommend are self-help, financial, or mystical books and not books that are centered around anything else. Hell, even the first book that came to the mind of this that's all folks dumbass was the 48 Laws of Power, which is the only book a lot of y'all have actually read. Here's a book. I want you to read to get some time. It's called uh, 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. Read that book. You have these non-scientists talk about scientific matters from an unscientific position, TikTokers that enforce a very weird conservative view whilst claiming things such as men throughout history predominantly married for love first, but when asked when to source this, their claims were, have you seen Bridgerton? That proves this point. No, I'm not making this up. That is what someone said. I wasn't alive and I wish I was lying. I really do. Through these unfactual positions being preached to an already growing number of people that fall victim to mass propaganda, it creates environments where any type of discourse is not only redundant, but actually destructive to progressive thought and critical thinking. What the fuck does she know about cameras? But it's for these very reasons as to why the rhetoric you would hear someone like Solomonati spit is one filled with things he scanned read somewhere, regurgitated, or come to that conclusion on his own thought without any type of a logical premise to said conclusion. He's a non sequitur personified. Therefore, to his audience, his antics, gimmicks, and charisma are so entertaining you kind of just forget about it and the personality allows you to believe that he's making a lick of sense. But provided with a smidgen of thought, you realize he's talking and stating claims that are spurious but they're derived from his rationale and he's talking a whole bunch of donkey <gasps> bullshit. But I never gave his content any thought because it didn't really cross my space. However, last month he dropped a video that I watched on stream with the Dimension Steppers where he's shedding light on the culture. The weirdo culture and the influx of the ever-growing creepos that are currently dominating the streaming and content creator space, including how the LGBTQ community are poisoning the minds of children and it's a great big demonic agenda which no one is realizing because we're all trapped in the matrix. Huh. Sounds oddly familiar to another bald lunatic. This took me down a rabbit hole of sorts. For several years now, he has maintained this spiritual soul, this chosen one avatar which is designed to separate himself from others in this so-called matrix. But when he talks about it, when he talks about the things that he is so far beyond, it doesn't actually align itself to the spirit in which he claims to be ascending to, but he talks from a place of complete and utter ignorance and factual incorrectness. There's a mistranslation between the spirit in which he believes he is and the content in which he talks about. As he would say, how he presents himself is an avatar. It's not real. Me, nothing on here is really me in real life. It's just images that I created on this bitch. But if it's not really you, and if they're images you've created, 
then why believe you? You never give us nothing to believe in. As such, what he spews isn't based on anything that can be identified in any relevant field of study that supports his claims without it being spirituality backed by nothing substantial. It's based on things he perceives as wrong or unnatural and then conflates that with the universe or some shit. It's how he reels in the unintelligible that accept things at face value. But this isn't the case of him just saying random shit and calling it a day. No, 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 no. It's him being a hypocrite to the lifestyle he actively does not support whilst making money from openly lying to his subscribers and patrons through these uneducated assessments of society and his methods of realizing one's consciousness which, by consequence, spreads misinformation others will pick up on. He is not a licensed practitioner of absolutely anything he talks about and while you have the freedom to spend your money how you wish, it does highlight a lack of good investment strategy as you are purchasing an invitation to receive information information that you could not only get for free, but information that's not even based on anything. In other words, lies. Information that's not true. But what exactly is this information? What is it about soul that vexes me so much? I'll show you. The foundation of the character that is the modern day soul Illuminati is rooted heavily in spirituality. Let me show you just what I'm talking about. A whole spiritual war going on and people is getting the fuck up out of here. And that's why I said if you don't know how to tap in with yourself and tap into that other version of you, where are you going to go when you die? Yeah, I know you got faith, bitch. You gonna get your ass zapped right back in here. Go ahead and walk your dumb ass to the white light that you didn't create. Right now, while y'all just chilling, happy, and just, they figuring out ways to put y'all ass back in the house. Especially so the chosen ones don't get none of that energy from the sun. And so for the rest of these motherfuckers, their immune system so low. The more y'all in the house, the, the, the better chance y'all have it. Like, listen, if you had a low vibration, you a bot. The more you in the house, I want you to know. I hate to say this, but it's a better chance you have at surviving, my nigga. The more they keep you in the house, the more you might be able to live. Fuck if you black. Like, I don't care what you are. You ain't gonna be able to survive past that energy up there in these next few years. It's not possible. This don't have nothing to do with no race, none of it. If you still stuck on that physical shit, you a bot. I'm just being honest with you. You talking to a nigga who get it 24-7. Nigga, the consciousness is damaged. People changing their genders. Niggas ain't man or woman no more. Nigga, y'all living with fucking non-organic beings. People still, oh, he's Satan. Oh my God, he's satanic. Nigga, these is, these is fucking NPCs that doing everything for them, bruh. These is literally niggas programmed with a fake consciousness, bruh. Don't, I, I, I'll talk more about that on Patreon, I ain't gonna get thrown off topic. But what y'all have to understand is, the war is happening right in front of y'all. Now, I understand this could come across as entertaining or funny, but when you stop laughing, you're able to clock on that he said a whole lot of nothing. Soul's references to consciousness, even referring to himself as a god to this abstractual higher power is based within the actual planes of one's soul, body, and existence, so to speak. The media in which we consume is one which derails us from tapping into this stronger sense of self and becoming, even referencing what is known to be as the quantum body. If you ain't able already to transition and you don't have the knowledge, you need to be watching people that's trying to tap you into your quantum body. Trying to tap you into your motherfucking astro body. Quantum body. Quantum body. I want to quickly examine what this quantum body is and by doing so, it'll introduce us into what we like to call the pseudo profound bullshit. Get it rolling, exhibit A. Despite the shit Soul says, we individually have quite unique ways of understanding and interpreting the world through various methods of reasoning. Some are rational idealists that base their worldview on their own perceptions, that they can make sense of the world through that knowledge and analyze. Others are empirical materialists that think critically about the world, the conditions that make them, what they represent and how they can transform these very conditions. One is grounded in theory and the other in praxis. In an essay by a number of psychologists, they detailed the mechanisms into people's ability and inability to detect bullshit. But not bullshit in the conventional way of how we understand it, that being nonsense. I told y'all the story sucks. But bullshit in a sense in which something that implies truth but does not contain adequate meaning or truth. Kind of like if someone were to say, the imposition of falsified truths to lead the unseen into the valley of illusionary freedom versus intentional lies can construct a fictional reality. The wording of the first statement seeks to communicate something of worth or value, but it's just a wordy babbling way to convey a message without a message being there, whilst confusing you into thinking that was something profound being said. That shit crazy. That shit crazy, bro. That's wild. That's crazy. That shit wild. Fuck. Bullshit receptivity is what causes our assessment of value and truth in these statements and propositions to hold any merit, and is done so through two mechanisms. The first one is of bias, and the second one is of ability. If we have a preconceived notion about a certain belief, then naturally our biases will respond to the information in an immediate acceptance or refusal to the information. If you are someone that is spiritual, then there is a likely chance you will find a lot of what Solomonati says 
regardless if it's right or not, aligning with your worldview biases because the two of you correlate for whatever reason. The startling possibility with respect to pseudo profound bullshit is that people will first accept the bullshit as true or meaningful and depending on the downstream of cognitive mechanisms such as conflict detection, either retain a default sense of meaningfulness or invoke deliberative reasoning to assess the truth or meaningfulness of the proposition. In other words, it is based around both the individual's cognitive processing of the information given to them and their overall assessment of the truth, their reason of it, and the conflict that exists. So the next time you listen to a politician or one of those muscle brain influencers trying to get one over on you, always think about the information they're saying first, process it, and ask yourself if you agree because it doesn't conflict with your line of reasoning or bias, or do you agree because the social conditions align themselves to their propositions? And then think about those social conditions both historically, scientifically, and independently of them. For example, is feminism really anti-men? The second mechanism concerns itself with the ability and inability to detect bullshit. So Illuminati says a lot of things that not only isn't true, but it, it just isn't clever. Even right now, I understand why he has fans, but I don't know how he has fans. There seems to be a lack in ability to differentiate what is and isn't accurate. And even if you would want to ascribe weight to what he says, it still lacks deep meaning as he seeks to be engaging as opposed to instructive. And despite Soul being a skeptic to common truths, he is a skeptic to common sense and foreign to logical reasoning, and therefore it can create this idea that his skepticism equals logic when logic is an integral requirement to skepticism because it still relies on a consistent and valid information against the contrary. To be a good reasoner, one must have both the capacity to do whatever computation is necessary, i.e. cognitive ability, intelligence, and the willingness to engage deliberative reasoning processes, i.e. analytic cognitive style thinking disposition. Moreover, individual differences in analytic cognitive style are positively correlated with conflict detection effects in reason research, indicating that more analytic individuals are either better able to detect conflict during reasoning or are more responsive to such conflict. Since this mechanism is less about bias and more about detection, I'm going to phrase this as bluntly as possible and remove all the fluff. Y'all intuitive thinkers, y'all ain't as bright as y'all think y'all are. That isn't to say intuition is bad or assessing things on impulse is bad, but it's reliance on scenarios which require motivation and ability to accurately process and deliberately make conclusions makes it so that the information you not only receive but project is very flawed. Analytical cognitive styles of reasonings are directly linked in the ability to detect a conflict in one's own logical, or lack thereof, approach in their statements. People who are more analytical and therefore better at solving reasoning problems are able to discern the lies through the smoke and trimming the fat to see if what someone is saying is deserving of further analysis. More intuitive individuals will respond on first impressions and that response will be dictated by the bullshit being spewed. In other words, analytical thinkers are able to identify that Soul is in fact an idiot. Because to any Soul fans that watch this, has he ever explained what the quantum body or any of these theories are in depth? To a degree backed by any credible study, maybe it's locked behind that paywall of his. Which is very convenient because Anytime he suggests to knowing something, he says, I'll talk more about that on my Patreon, nudging you to purchase more of your services. Fun fact, if you do that, you will come back knowing less than what you knew beforehand, so don't do it. Anyway, I decided to do some research, you know, something this nigga doesn't do, and it led me to none other than the amazing and incredible Deepak Chopra. See, Deepak had a problem, because he's known for trying to merge science with the spiritual. Deepak is the one who coined the terms quantum healing and quantum body, two terms which he would make a whole lot of money from because Deepak believes in the quantum model is the best model for mind-body spirituality, and a model which has been backed by quantum theorists. Quick footnote, if you search up Jack Szynski who was the quantum physicist who corroborated and assisted the pack in the making of the book Quantum Body, anywhere you see his name and his title, it's always detailed as the professor of oncology and a physicist. Nowhere else that is unrelated to the book is he classified as a quantum physicist. That is only something the pack says and those that are writing about the book say. 
the reviews and the details of the authors. And this is no diss towards Jack in any way, shape or form. And you may perceive this as like a very minor innocuous nitpick, but it's one which shows you a very detailed, insightful perception into the mind of the pack. Because which one is closer to the truth when it comes down to swaying public opinion of your product when marketing it? That it was corroborated by a physicist, or it was corroborated by a quantum physicist in a book about the quantum body, mind, and consciousness trying to prove the quantum elements in this field of spirituality. Quantum in this context refers to the quantum mechanics of how the universe and nature operates on an atomic and subatomic scale, differing from classical mechanics which concerns these scientific notions on a macro scale and how it would describe these ideas on a level beyond classical mechanics. Chopper would claim the ground state of all existence is the superstition of possibilities, that our memories exist within our bodies as possibilities until they're actualized per the uncertainty principle, which in layman terms states that the more precisely the precision of a particle is given, the less precisely one can say what its position is. And while there can be no certainty of these positions, we are able to calculate either the speed or position of the particle, but not simultaneously. So for example, it's like looking at sonic run. If you want to determine just the speed and calculate that, you could do that, but not the position. So if you take a snapshot, you could understand the position that sonic is in, but then not the speed. I know it's a lot, but my understanding understanding is that it operates in a chaotic manner similar to how Markov chains moves, which is the stochastic processing of sequential events that are defined from prior models and events. In other words, think of it like a game of snakes and ladders, where your actions are determined by the randomness of the number you get from rolling the dice. In this instance, the mind and consciousness is then quantum in accordance to the modes of sense perception, such as qualia, which is our subjective sensory experience. Something's off. He's blabbing on and on. In connection, it's is also high? quantum in nature. If you heard all of that and think what I said doesn't make any sense, it's because it doesn't. Quantum consciousness isn't a thing. The quantum model isn't a thing. Quantum body isn't a thing. These ain't... These ain't things. I'm not going to assume who and who doesn't know what any of these things mean in depth and for actual lovers of science and actual scientists feel free to debate these ideas in the comments but the reason I'm saying all of this is because Sol doesn't know any of this to any degree. How do I know that? When you search up quantum body, no matter the format, the search engine results are largely linked to Chopra and the book he published about the quantum body on the 7th of December 2023. Sol made a video referencing this at the beginning of 2023, and I have reasons to believe this is not the first and only time he has referenced and used the word quantum. So my question is this, So, what the fuck are you talking about? You dumbass! Unless you have some precognitive awareness of what the contents of the material was, what exactly did you mean by tapping into the quantum body? Because even in the context you threw the term in there, bears no correlation to what was said prior or grounded in anything plausible. But for the sake of playing devil's advocate, let's say Sol somehow knew this. Sol did his research and knew what he was talking about. The Pack Chopper's research is not only a pseudoscience, but theorists, medical, and scientific professionals refer to his jargon as techno babble word salad, trying to lure people away from credible and actual medical treatments and information because he is a sophist, someone who uses words in a very clever manner, but the arguments don't make sense. He is not a scientist, he doesn't have a degree in physics, he studied medical science. Hence why actual scientists refer to his work as Eastern wisdom mixed with pseudoscience and pop psychology using buzzwords like quantum, vibration, essence, energy, and reconstructing these words whilst removing these scientific foundations of where they come from. But quantum mysticism, something so on the pack of profound students of throw all that away because it's too hard to comprehend what would require a fundamental understanding in classical physics to a bachelor's degree at the very least. So what they will extrapolate is quantum is really small stuff that happens on a really small level and it's beyond scientific comprehension. So... Bankai. This is a very classic tale. Astrology and similar theories can be appreciated, acknowledged, and even respected. 
metaphorically. Science discerns itself by asserting theories fueled by data and praxis. This is an important understanding when concerning both the history and development of concepts and objects, another thing Solomonati does not understand. As we understand from the likes of Marx, the evolution of all things are done through a process of iterative developments which give birth to new interpretations, understandings, and soon production of said idea and objects. This is what he, along with Engels, would classify as historical materialism, which posits the material conditions and economic components serve as the primary factors for human history and society. It's a theory that states that the economic base shapes the superstructure, culture, politics, and beliefs of said society. Marx discovered that all human societies are of necessity rooted in the material conditions of human survival based on food, shelter, clothing, etc., and that people enter into very definite social relations to attain these ends. The material foundation of all human existence is the process of production exchange and distribution consumption. We understand the society of human existence is built upon material conditions, but if that's the case, why do people like so state such things which presupposes that the spiritual and the metaphysical serves as the basis of society. In an age ago in ancient civilizations, mathematics, religion, society, and the overall basis and superstructure that Marx mentioned was not rooted in the material conditions, but it was rooted in the theoretical understanding of the universe and how these divine truths give reasons to our logic and therefore our logic builds the fundamental understanding of the society. And for example, this is how the Aristotelians and the Greeks would actually go ahead and create the foundation of said societies. Their logic came from the idea that zero and infinity do not exist. They were aware of the number zero, but because they were afraid of the void and how zero was indivisible to them, they couldn't make sense of it. Better put, refused to make sense of it. So they omitted it from their development for over a thousand years. It sounds silly, but I promise you, I'm not making that up. Through this rejection of zero and infinity, the universe didn't make sense in the aspect of its immense expansion. There had to be a limit since there was no such thing as the beyond. However, this line of reasoning would lead to the cultural acceptance of God. The heavenly spheres are slowly spinning in their places, making a music that suffuses the cosmos. But something must cause that motion. The stationary earth cannot be the source of that motive power, so the innermost sphere must be moved by the next sphere out. That sphere, in turn, is moved by the larger neighbor, and on and on and on. But remember, infinity does not exist, so there has to be some sort of end to this as there has to be some type of movement to continue this cycle. Something must be moving the sphere of fixed stars. This is the prime mover, God. When Christianity swept through the West, it became closely tied to existence. Atomism became associated with atheism. Questioning the Aristotelian doctrine was tantamount to questioning God's existence. The key takeaway here is that the conditions placed upon the time had made such a logic both sound and valid. I mean, these guys would seriously kill anyone who rejected it otherwise. But that's also the point. This was the limitations their society and environment confined their understanding of the universe to. Theorizing the infinite and the possibility of transforming the what ifs into the what is, and having a little resistance due to strong social influence and power with no opposition. But what happens when these ideas develop? Contradictions and evidence serve the contrary. This isn't to say God does or does not exist or astrology bears no meaning or significance, but it does say that these ideas was conceived with a bunch of niggas looking at the stars that day going, all hell the magic country! Trying to find the meaning in life and if these things have any effects on human behavior Behavior, along with trying to understand seasonal changes. They were also trying to find out what day it was and the best time of years to farm, so. We can identify that many of the things astrologists draw their facts from were most definitely a form of science and legible. Several thousand years ago, when we had no technology, the exact same thing goes with medicine and biology, where doctors would never wash their hands or tools and would wonder why all their patients were dying. And even before that, Hand washing was not a thing of hygiene practice, but a religious one as opposed to preventing the spreads of diseases. This historical evolution and conditions in which further fueled these ideas, regardless of the social field, justified their beliefs, but would also give rise to a new understanding of both history and the material world. And while history is fixed but interpretive, science is a constantly shifting and evolving thing. So the roots in which the pack operates in is not only antiquated in its nature, but easily disproved and classified as a pseudoscience 
and even more dangerous an endeavor as he inspires the belief that age is some mental construct or there are multiple universes out there beyond human observation or whatever. So when you hear shit like the ground state of all existence is the superstition of possibilities, I hope now you can hear that and you don't think, oh wow, this is something Master Uga would say, therefore I won't question it. And now you may think, damn brother, what does that mean? Now, applying everything that we have said about the pack and any other self-proclaimed scientist or expert that actually have degrees, published books, and conducted research into these studies, think about how asinine all their shit is, how their logic is ridiculed out of fields of academia, how much of their hocus pocus hogwash they articulate in a very eloquent manner that create the illusion of intelligence. Think of the same people that actually have degrees and are to a level respected in these various fields. Think of all these people and then think of Solomonati. In this light though, honestly, the only difference between the pack and soul is that only one of them dropped out of college. And while college is not a definitive measurement of intelligence, soul has zero verifiable and scientific foundation in anything to be spouting off such nonsense to degrees that should render him to be seen in any light that is not hysterical. So if the pack should not be taken seriously in any way, shape or form, and he's smarter than you, then by relation, we definitely shouldn't take anything this nigga says seriously either. And this wouldn't be a topic of discussion if he himself was not serious about any of the things he talks about. But unfortunately, he is. And to our greater dismay, he has convinced a lot of y'all to buy his quantum elixir. He is a self-proclaimed spiritual teacher or spiritual leader with zero credentials. And that's what's funny. Because in that same breath of him calling himself a spiritual leader, he doesn't understand the words he reads and then he says, I'm not a teacher, do your own research. I want y'all to know by me being a spiritual teacher or a spiritual leader, I come across people all the time that tell me they can't sun gaze or they can't get sun. And then it be having me thinking like, damn, how is that possible? And as I start getting further and further into my spiritual journey, I understand and understand we are all not one. Everybody has came here for a different, different purpose and it is some people that's organic to the planet and it is some people that's not organic to the planet. I connect it with nature, they have no connection with the planet. And it's not even they fought and they don't even know. Because they never took the time out to learn not only their history, but my history as well and where I came from. You would have known if you went and did research on all of the history. You would have known everything. Research, knowledge. If you lack knowledge, you would die in this age. This is the end, y'all. Nature is taking back over. No matter what they try to connect nature with. Oh, it's a food shortage because of the war. No, it's nature. I'm about to give y'all a list of some things that I have came across and people. It's like a pattern. Some people told me they've been having insomnia and heart polyp heart. Palpitations, or whatever that fucking word is, y'all know what it is, P-A-L-P-I-T-A-T-I-O-N-S, I ain't no fucking teacher, do your own research. If you want more evidence on soul just saying random shit and not knowing what it means. I just been evolving without the attention, dude. I progress in, I progress in silence. I guess I'm an antisocial, you could call me an antisocial extrovert. So, this would mean you're criminally minded as you're confusing antisocial with asocial tendencies. What you meant to say was, you're an ambivert, which is someone who shares both introverted and extroverted characteristics. It's honestly impressive that he's created this quasi cult-like following and tricks y'all into thinking he's enlightened. So we have the basis of Soul's pseudo-intellectual framework established and understood. How does he use these very things in the practice of his content in matters that aren't related to spirituality and pseudoscience? In addition to his general lack of intelligence, which contradicts whatever he tries to talk about, he also presents a very harmful and destructive ideology towards non-binary people, members of the LGBTQ plus community, and just anyone who he deems standing against any sort of patriarchal norm. Despite not knowing, especially within the black community, many of the reasons in which such discrimination exists, why it persists, and the adversaries which further perpetrate these ideas and ideologies do not correlate with progressive ideas and critical thought leaders such as Angela Davis, Suey P. Newton, Fred Hampton, and Malcolm X as they all advocated for something that stands against that grain. As mentioned earlier in the video, we saw how bias and ability are categorically linked to the cognitive and analytical side of reasoning and processing information. And through that, we're able to see how it is mostly an subjective experience that these content creators or intuitive thinkers draw from when it comes down to looking at a much more objective context of situations and sociological problems. I tend to put personal opinions and beliefs that are intrinsic to the individual at the tail end of the causal algorithm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to almost always be cultural and environmental. Uh, poor to moderately poor white people are just as outwardly and performatively homophobic as, you know, your Solomonatis. 
Um, and then like not so poor white people are just as homophobic, but they're just privately, you know what I'm saying? If not more, but the covering of whiteness allows them to operate in and around queerness with far more freedom than we can. As far as the black community goes, we will later see how such bigoted ideologies are not rooted in souls with supernatural sandbox, non-organic rhetoric, or whatever your favorite streamer says about such ideas, but linked within a larger structure of racial identity erasure, family dynamics and functions, and a comparative analysis black people would have of each other imposed by the white superstructure. So where Soul describes the ideas as being unorthodox in the nature of the universe, which in itself doesn't make any sense as he's imposing a heteronormal of structure on an otherwise divine and transcendental compound, he's far more like those he believes he's not associated with than he would want us to believe. Speaking of going against the grain and anyone that so criticizes are those that just don't fit into his conscious worldview, I want y'all to remember this statement he made about Zeus where he claims that Zeus is a demise to black men. If you don't know who Zeus is, he's another big content creator and Solomonati has had a pretty public and known track record of initiating a criticism and dispute with him over Zeus's representation of masculine features and association with Aiden Ross. But for Solomon to say that Zeus is the master black men after knowing who he is, I'm so glad he said that because it really does build and help contextualize what I'm about to get into. For some strange reason, many content creators and entertainers love to make fun and insult the minorities within these communities because it's low hanging fruit and know it will get an immediate response and positive reception from their fan base. However, while you have your losers and those like Kaisenat and Aiden Ross that will either openly or covertly disrespect trans people, make them the butt of the joke and use them for content, which especially in Aiden's case is extremely weird given his past of closeted comedy bits, so openly states them to be non-organic beings and how we need to draw the line for those that don't want to be human. Y'all gotta start drawing the line for people that don't want to be human, bro. Like, it is what it fucking is. He focuses on the issues raised in who and how these people are and detracting us from what these individuals do, and both are baseless. Because that following statement was anteceded by that, anything that follows will be invalidated by the bias that he has against them, and we see that in full effect when he comments about the Iman Khalif situation. Exhibit B. Speaking of intersexes, look up what just happened in the Olympics. Old girl got hit one time and quit because the only punched too hard. What the fuck is doing boxing against women? I'm telling you right now, fem boys, all no, y'all niggas catching these hands if you ever come near me. You can be the prettiest all the time. I'm beating you up if you ever put your hands on me. I think it's funny he's the one to ask us to do our own research but he himself didn't do any research on this situation at all because he further proved the idea that he just gets his information from the very platforms he tells us to stop being so absorbed by and reports that Amin Khalif is a trans woman despite the fact she's a cis woman and always has been. This is something a vast majority of major news outlets were so outstandingly quick to report, make statements about and openly send fire to this woman's way, opening the floodgates of digital harassment but it took me two minutes to find out that every single one of them were wrong once I typed her name in and did a brief background check. So, you would have known this if you spent a moment of your time learning about the things you try to teach us about as opposed to looking like a complete dumbass. But apparently, in his words, he studies anatomy. Call me Roy, whatever, the, whatever the, my nigga name is, that's my bro. I told y'all the little, the little girl, the little nigga had anatomy, her whole body looked like mine. And I study anatomy. I study human anatomy so I could tell what is what. And at the time, I was deeply on senior retention. So I had a lot of energy on my no fat shit. I wasn't really on no less shit. So when I'm coming across beautiful ass girls, I see a beautiful ass girl. And when I'm coming across a nigga, I see a nigga. And I told y'all straight up in that video, bro, this bitch could be a boy. I told y'all, she was a girl. You see, whenever So says he studies something, I think it's better to assume that he just looked at something and then came to a conclusion based on what he perceived. Because apparently, this weird trans shit only came into fruition in 2015-2016, or more so, was pushed into the straight community around that time, noting that they were dragged before then, but occupied their own space. Wrong again. While the term transgenderism was coined in 1965 by psychiatrist John F. Oliver, transgender history can find its roots dating all the way back to 7000 to 4000 BC, as you would have eunuchs and third sex identifying individuals. Understanding that sex was interpreted differently among among different cultures, such as in ancient Rome, you had a group known as the Galli, who were uh, eunuch priests and priestesses who would self castrate themselves in the worshipping of the goddess Sibeli. I apologize if I'm butchering that. I ain't no fucking teacher, do your own research. Who 
was born of both double sex and multiple depictions of her possessing both sexual organs. The gallery would then castrate themselves in order to adopt this lavish feminine attire and acquire ambiguous space within Roman domains. Something else we would have to understand, sorry, I mean Saul would have to understand, that is transgender does not exclusively mean someone who has gone through a sex change. It's the identity people subscribe to that differs from the sex they thought to be at birth. This is nothing new. It's been around for a very, very, very long time. What Soul means to say is that it's becoming a lot more accepted largely in Western culture. And when I say accepted, I mean that so loosely because people are still unaliving and condemning the LGBTQ community and members thereof and any form of representation is both highly conservative and very cookie cutter. This coupled together with patriarchal rooted ideologies behind homosexuality and trans identity is another misconception. A misconception which has been weaponized heavily not just against us in society but within our own black culture. The logic behind for these people is that there are no gay black people which is just that's that's it in the in the world of the Soluminatis and the Dr. Belsings and the Umars and the Tariq Nasheeds and that kind of that whole coterie of like Neil Hotep, pork chop nationalist black folks that you know have an agenda and a, and a fan base, but spend so much time talking either about interracial relationships or gay people. Um, they, their logic of that argument hinges on the idea that there's just never been a gay black person. That's the only way their reasoning makes sense is that, you know, gay people didn't exist in Africa and none of, and no black person would be gay if not for, you know, Jewish laser beams or whatever the fuck their version of this conspiracy entails. Right. Uh, what is it? Soy milk and frogs is one of them. There's historical evidence of how black men specifically were targeted and were denied, uh, you know, air quotes, traditional venues to attain, you know, normative American masculine roles and how that within a patriarchal society that does put black people as a whole of, of any walk of life at, at a disadvantage. If all power and wealth run through, you know, men, not that that's a good thing. Um, but if, you know, all power, wealth and provision run through men and you make it darn near impossible for black men to attain the, that power, wealth and provision, then you're going to put the entirety of black people at a significant disadvantage, along with creating the room for the, you know, Tariq Nasheeds and Solomonides of the world. So. It's a complex challenge. Knowing the complexity of this problem, it is not an isolated incident. And we know this in full effect when it comes down to our own black community that we still dehumanize, demoralize, and devalue the identity of our fellow black peers, even if they were to identify as something else, even if they're still taking up arms against the forces of supremacy and oppression, which systematically disenfranchise us and have done so for generations. When the Black Panther Party movement was first formed, while it served as a revolutionary act against the forces of white supremacy, which later identified to be capitalism. As we know, the two are categorically linked. Its heavy focus on combating racism and the need and the essential quality to survive completely overshadowed the sexism and homophobia that existed heavily both within the movement. Existing through means of male chauvinism, male supremacy, looks to divide the same groups and people that should stand united in resistance against the forces that seek to not understand us, but to further dominate us. We have been indoctrinated to condemn the very comrades we issued practices to protect and thus would develop a a fractured ideology of liberation and consciousness. Given that the Black Panther Party's principal battle was against white supremacy and capitalist exploitation, male-female relationships and issues of gender and sexuality often took a backseat. As a result, innumerable women thought that you were betraying brothers if you criticized what was going on with sisters in a general way. Tackling issues of gender and sexuality, especially from women's point of view, was to undermine race unity and thus impede the black liberation struggle. This deep-rooted chauvinism that spread throughout the black liberation was something the likes of Huey Newton stood for and in fact would later address as a cancer that would need to be cut out and exterminated. Huey Newton issued a formal party position about the women's liberation and gay liberation movements, challenging the heterosexual normativity and patriarchy in the party. With Newton's public stance, the Black Panther Party became the first major national black organization to embrace gay rights. Newton identified homosexuals and women as oppressed groups, noting that homosexuals might be the most oppressed people in society, and arguing that a homosexual man should have freedom to use his body in whatever way he wants. 
This is the same revolutionary party which included the Hispanic community through the nature of the Young Lords, the Asians through the Red Guard, and white people through the Young Patriots, forming the Rainbow Coalition. We too would have to acknowledge revolutionaries that extend beyond race, but included in sex and gender. To start issuing a much more intellectual approach in identifying that you cannot fight against oppression whilst oppressing your comrades in that same field. So he would urge and teach those of the revolutionary party to remove such derogatory terms against homosexuals within the community and treat women not as instruments to push up revolutionary babies but as allies that should be protected, valued, and seen as equal in the fight against supremacist ideologies. Newton argued that those within the party should look to transcend a revolutionary value system and that advance the opposition of homosexuals and men should discuss how their hatred of homosexuals stems from an insecurity and fear of potentially being identified as homosexual. The light this puts soul into, one where he proclaims himself as enlightened, is ridiculous at worst and laughable at best, because he would be conforming to the very identities he can condemned as programming the youth and destroying the consciousness. With the historical and racial context of race and identity and how they operate, and knowing that, he plays right into those higher capitalistic powers which are alien, soul-vacant entities designed to blind us from the truth, it just verifies he doesn't read, study, or grasp even the basic concepts of what he talks about. I'm not saying Soul talks about black liberation or struggle, but he does talk about liberating from the programming and the matrix and all that other shit that those other a dumbass dork spew. Ironically, his blatant homophobic and transphobic views are rooted in the same teachings as male chauvinism, white supremacy, and capitalism. These three things intersect. These three things feed off each other, and soul feeds off them. Adhere to the teachings you think you know better than, but you wouldn't be tuned into any of that because you a bot, my nigga. You a bot. That's tough. And something soul does, dare I say, cleverly, and I say cleverly so loosely, is to derail what he should be supporting with evidence by saying this is weaponized towards children without actively providing studies that support that. In addition to that, so weren't you the same pranking ass nigga that was providing suggestive constant ideas towards a younger fan base as well? Oh wait, that was before you were spiritual soul. But you are a fully functioning adult knowing the views and the tensions and the revenue it would bring you. It doesn't take a spirit to understand how marks in your content to its best efficiency works. It's a slick manipulation tactic he uses a lot in the videos. He slides whilst making a bigger point. Like when he said this. Listen, just like, ooh, like you're transgender. Bro, if I'm a god, I know y'all going through a lot. I'm gonna be honest with you, on my spiritual channel, I have helped a lot of people get through like suicidal shit. And I ain't even trying to be, act like I'm just this special person. I, I knew, I've been in a position where I actually help people from not dying. And a few of them was getting backlash and just going through shit because they was, ooh. Now they go through spiritual shit too, some of them regret it. I even told y'all it's groups that goes against the communities because the communities has nothing to do with them. It's just they go to the kids. Most people make these decisions when they older and they regret it. So imagine what's gonna happen to the kids that they let them do this shit and then they get older. You know what I'm saying? That ain't gonna get pushed. They gonna just talk about, oh, it's okay. But they ain't gonna never show the backlash, the, the deaths, all the surgeries, the, the bro. Ooh. It's leading in suicide, all type of shit. It's like crazy. It's leading in suicide. It's leading in suicide. <laughs> This just, this just isn't true at all. First of all, in the US, according to the Census Bureau, which counts the population every 10 years, in 2022, they reported that the current population of the US stands at 333.3 million people. Out of that population, only 1.13% identify as trans, which makes up just a little over 3 million people. That's not even half the population of Michigan. Do you know the gender that has consistently led the amount of self unalivement successfully committed? It's not a trick question, it's very easy. Men. Male identifying men with white males and Native Americans slash Alaskan born natives leading those rates. And it's a rate which increases the older you are, not the younger you are. In this realm, the only thing trans people are leading are attempted unalivements and unalivement ideation. But that's not because they regret their decision, which is another statistical myth, but because of societal treatment. People tell them they shouldn't exist. They have a mental illness. They have a disease. They are a disease. They are systematically outcasted, demonized, condemned, and ridiculed. Once again, so what the fuck are you talking about? They lead unalivement attempts and ideations because niggas like you say, if a trans person comes my way, I'm going to fight them. Aren't you some self-proclaimed anti-unalivement advocate? For someone who's pro-consciousness and escaping the matrix, you sound like a bot, my nigga. You a bot. 
that's tough. In irony, he will talk about GMO advancements and transhuman figurations and chips and mind body consciousness. Yeah. Cyberpunk 2077 is one of my favorite games too, so. You know, someone was just giving you the basic summary of every single sci-fi movie ever made and saying this is gonna happen in like 30 years and y'all go Woo! I don't know, it just sounded hot. He's prophetic. Yes, so scientific evolution is very real. We knew AI was coming before you and I were born because AI was around before you and I were even born. The desire to be entertained trumps the importance of being aware, especially within the community and content groups who derive said entertainment from. And I voiced my stance on this before way back on my epidemic video, but what I didn't touch on was just how damaging this form of entertainment can be when it comes from these largely influential figures that will voice his opinions and thoughts, such as with violent and discriminative discourses towards non-binary individuals as black people, this feels very different when we do it against each other as opposed to when other races, white people, do it against us. On one hand, we look to stand in solidarity against racial injustice and institutionalized practices, but on that same hand, maintain that aggressive and obstructive force towards our own the same way our oppressors do to us, isolating a minority within a minority while still be marginalized in these large corporate spaces is a very odd space to occupy. Only to then say, it's a device mechanism to defer our attention from the real cosmic problem out there. This is why I say listening to such demagogues will lead us right back into the clutches from the very people and ideas and spaces we try to stray away from. And it's those same ironic people that try to preach their intellectualism and critical thought that will look at these things without applying any type of meta-analysis. This plight is one which runs rampant incredibly hard in the spaces that concern black content creators. Hence why a lot of us would rather opt to be leaders of red pool ideology or fake science as opposed to being something radical or at the very least inspiring in the realms of society that need such figures. And this is because in regards to the latter, i.e. red pill and fake science, you don't actually need to read anything credible because upon reading such things, you will discover critical thinking. And when you discover critical thinking, you'll realize, shit, what I'm saying doesn't actually make any sense. Miseducation is a very real and prevalent issue among black youth. I emphasize black because we're the only ones that cannot have our failures or ignorance publicized. Otherwise, we will all be generalized as subhuman and inferior beings in both culture and class. We are not exemplified by our intellect, rich history, or revolutionary advancements, but ostracized due to a system that has worked tirelessly to strip away the education that we depend on to bridge these gaps of being misunderstood and mistreated. Any sense to push back against such a moral institution is met with pity. You should be grateful that we even allow you to rent property. You should be grateful to purchase goods in the same stores as us. You should be grateful that we allow you to vote. You should be grateful we allow you to exist. And where education fails us is when we stray from the path when promoting black excellence purely in the form of black entertainment. I told you a little while ago, these leaders that they call leaders, this included Lena Horn, this included Dick Gregory, and this included comedians, comics, trumpet players, baseball players. Show me in the white community where a comedian is a white leader. Show me in the white community where a singer is a white leader, or a dancer or a trumpet player is a white leader. These aren't leaders. These are puppets and clowns that uh, have been set up over the white community and or over the black community by the white community and have been made celebrities and usually say exactly what uh, they know that the white man wants to hear. So when people like Soul tell us that modern medicine is damaging to our body or we're bots living in the matrix and we roam about further promoting this ideology without knowing what it is we're talking about, it makes the efforts of those that actually deserve to be in those spaces even more difficult to exist because of prior idiots eclipse them due to our desire to be educated through means that are the least taxing and time consuming for us. When you have your red pill gurus that use terms like sexual market value and completely re define the definitions of these concepts and purely in the desire of monetary gain and menial social influence, it makes the disconnect between education and not cherry picking data a lot more wider. I always stress the importance of moderating the attention you give these individuals because while the detox from the stresses of life is most definitely important and you may find the instrument of such relief in these individuals, that will soon turn into devotion if you do not check that and that very devotion will soon blind you from holding them accountable to the degree which makes that platform shake. 
This happens with the clear and gross scum of our community. Your King Sids or this disgusting filth bat who set up that 20 feet one with these little ass kids. Like, dog, like, what are you doing? I, I'm gonna keep it a buck. I never watched this video because I'm not signed to Bad Boy Records. But upon looking at the first couple minutes, this old ass nigga was really promoting one of those cash app type of games where you play an app and then get money in return to a little ass kid as a sponsorship for a video about low ass kids. Now, I don't agree with everything Umar says, but I'm gonna tell you this though. I agree that we cannot psychologize all these niggas around the street corner. Some of y'all need to go to sleep from time. Anyway, let's get back to wrapping this up now. While we openly and without shame attack these weirdos, rightfully, but we look at Seoul as someone on a scale of lesser importance because the fact of the matter is, to many, especially to those that are easily amused and not critically aware, they don't grasp the severity of what he says and how what he is saying is very dangerous. One of the strongest examples in the recent decade of black men being completely indoctrinated with non-combatable ideologies in regards to our race do come in the form of the Andrew Tate Myron Gaines, Kevin Samuels, and to an extent, Dr. Umar Johnson, because it all hinges on the idea, still, of male supremacy and chauvinism. Of course, Dr. Uma branches from the former because he still believes in male chauvinism just on the black supremacist side of things. While I can openly admit that through my exposure of Dr. Uma throughout the years, I have admittedly learned more about black injustice and academic warfare designed to create inferiority among us, I know when to separate those talking points when he just starts talking some bullshit about the animal kingdom analogies and how gays and trans people have something wrong with them and it's destroying the black family. You know, Dr. Francis Quest was saying coded rhetoric, but on his most basic level, I can acknowledge his consistent attempts and actions to teach people in a way which differs from the really annoying attempts I see on TikTok. Seriously, what is in the water with this white people can't experience racism talk? Look dog, I am the last person to back the cocaine shaded people, but what are y'all trying to prove with this? Yes, we know they've never suffered from systematic racism and most likely never will. I. So what's up now? Like, where do you go from here? Look, I'ma keep it a buck. Y'all may love licking them pasty cheeks to get drunk off that white tearing, cocaining, snorting up your nose, cloud skinned nourishment, but I'ma keep it a whole stack fifth. That milk does not nourish me because this conversation breeds nothing of any type of intellectualism or progression in any of the fields that actually matter in the forms of economic, political, and social liberation that we should all be contributing to, which is a grander problem which no one seems to consider on these TikTok spaces because, and this is sending no hate to any of them over there, but if y'all actually join these lives and just listen for like 10 minutes, you'll realize, damn, nothing insightful is being obtained and these conversations are not conducive in any way, shape or form because not only is the platform which you are inviting your guest speakers onto inherently biased, but they leave knowing less than what they should be knowing, which is a problem and a battle that attacks class racial disputes remain racial disputes and they don't venture into class disputes that is the bigger underlining problem i am not saying race is not a problem i'm not saying systematic racism no longer exists it most definitely still does persist and people need to be aware of it but if it remains in that conversation and does not venture out into a classist picture i'm sorry but you are just wearing the koofy hat by night and putting on the blue collar by day let's keep it a buck Anyway, back to what I was saying. Where you will have someone like Myron Gaines talk about how men need to act like this and act like that is heavily rooted in that institutionalized talk, which makes sense because he himself is institutionalized and wishes he was white and hates himself for being black because of how he was treated all his life. Especially someone who is of Sundanese descent, he doesn't accept the fact that he is a black person because he desires to be a white person. He will continuously operate in spaces where white people will openly degrade him and devalue him on levels far worse then he has degraded black woman because he's scratching himself to the bone for dear old masses attention to the point where he will present a sympathetic front towards the very people that claim white supremacy but that doesn't matter to him because by his own account he agrees with the white supremacist ideology but he accepts them because they never accepted him as fanon in black skin white mass would say when the negro makes contact with the white world a certain sanitizing action takes place if his psychic structure is weak one observes a collapse of the ego. The black man stops behaving as an actual person. The goal of his behavior will be the other in the guise of the white man. For the other alone can give him worth. That is on the ethical level, self-esteem. If you want that to be phrased in a manner which is a lot less wordy and a lot more contemporary, Disgusting black creatures, get out of my sight.
while it may not be as severe, I see a correlation between Myron Gaines and Solomonati in the aspect of presentation. They both hinge on the idea of trying to educate the uneducated. In Soul's eyes, we are bots. In Myron's eyes, we're beta males. The route they take, while different, are built with the same materials because it takes people away from the truth and historical context strictly in the favor of the bias that they can monetize. Myron's case is just more depressing because he's a victim of racism and discrimination to the point where he has defeated himself and he is just completely alienated from the other black community and his identity is beyond saving. Then again, he was an agent for Homeland Security that got his criminal justice degree from Northeastern University in Boston. While it's not surprising of how he turned out, it's unfortunate because he now infects others with that same ideology infused into him. One which teaches black men to view women as inferior and even less black women. Because he himself bends over for the white man. Most of these grifters are like that, you know, Candace Owens. And it comes from exactly what you've described. You know, the unfortunate flying the milk experience. Cause not, this is not everybody that, you know, had to grow up. <laughs> flying the milk but, is like, crazy. When you're flying the milk, there's a good chance that you've been made to be very ashamed of your blackness by the nature of where you've had to develop and some of them they just kind of like manage it best they can some of them it makes them super pro-black and some of them it makes them super anti-black a lot of niggas are trying to escape being black and mm. what that means for their lives and then it's not enough to just be anti-black and racist for these motherfuckers no 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 it doesn't stop there it goes a step further when you have a lot of these guys preaching anti-intellectual ideas suffering from the dunning-kruger effect furthermore spreading this very bad infection of just pseudo-intellectualism and then it becomes a plague the plague pseudo-intellectualism and controlled information breeds is a considerable dangerous one because it does two things it creates a mask use to infiltrate society spread misinformation and fractured knowledge and to worse degrees following that it also inspires others to heed their teachings as facts and knowledge and further spread that misinformation with every time that information jumps from ear to ear the truth distorts ever so greatly and it strays you further and further from the history that developed that truth and the conditions in which manufactured the societies that produce such perceptions of reality the perceptions that allow people like solomonati and even a charlie kirk to come across as insightful and yes this happens on both sides, for it is a tool to direct our culture and intellect, but they are tools used to operate control and narratives, but their agendas do not differ too greatly. In the act of ushering an intelligent society, your very gods in a creative, social, economical, and political space do not hold your interest to any strong concern or value if they are not in service of their own political agendas. It begins with the social, however, as that is what dictates our reality. As Marx famously said, In the social production of our existence, men inevitably enter into definite relations, which are independent of their will, namely relations of production appropriate to a given stage in the development of their material forces of production. The totality of these relations of productions constitutes the economic structure of society, the real foundation on which arises a legal and political superstructure and to which corresponds definite forms of social consciousness. The mode of production of material life conditions the general process of social, political, and intellectual life. It is not the consciousness of men that determines their existence, but their social existence that determines their consciousness. As much as soul purports an idealistic view of reality, it's not grounded in anything. And since it's not grounded in anything, it gives him free reign to spout such nonsense with the hope that one's rationale, if they've not been exposed to any critical thought, can agree with it. The quintessence, the lifeblood of a pseudo-intellectual. Someone who memorizes facts without context. Social conditions without understanding historical conditions. The fault of knowing a concept, but not learning a fact. We cannot know things purely through a priori knowledge. Something so would like to have you believe as we're constructed beings, souls, and transitions from life to life. And while I won't attack anyone's spiritual beliefs, honestly, if you believe in astrology, reincarnation, God, multiple universes, I'm not gonna tell you you can't. But I will always implore you to look at these very concepts critically if you try to merge them within a scientific and historical framework. As these operations conflict not just by nature of them being different in how we view them in society, but one being based in the theory of our biases and preference, and one being grounded in the what is, what has happened, and what has led to that thing to happen. When you are in the presence of such an encounter, remember, 
Pseudo-intellectualism is easy. They exist in the realm of pop science. It takes much less effort to memorize a few fun facts than it does to actually consider experimental design or study limitations. It is pervasive among politicians who have to appear as if they have all the answers. Apparently, every one of them knows how to fix the economy, improve the education system, keep us safe, and reduce crime. In reality, they don't know how to do any of these things, and many of the things they promise aren't even things a person in their office could do. Voting also promotes a common student intellectualism. Americans are told that all their opinions matter in the cases of public policy, but they are never actually educated on any of the relevant problems or solutions. They are taught nothing, and then they are told their views are important. The appearance of knowledge without substance. Like I said, this is a strong method of control. The best way to reduce a community's ability to intellectually produce itself is to greatly cut off their ability to learn and to increase their exposure and desire to be entertained and then have them debate which one is the problem. Through association of the people that are popular, polarizing, liked and disliked, we're centered around the importance of the interaction and not the importance as to why said interactions work so effectively in manipulating the class consciousness and making us completely ignore the spectacles as a whole. Attention is a currency and we're making these motherfuckers richer beyond belief. I'm not saying you can't enjoy anyone anymore. I'm just asking y'all to be more aware. I'm asking y'all to think more critically about what's being said, who's saying it, and why they're saying it. The people you think are saying something profound or intelligent aren't. You just haven't heard it before. Now, with all this being said, I now began this by stating that Sol Minati was the pinnacle of pseudo-intellectualism, which isn't actually the case. Because the truth of the matter is, I don't think Solomonati is the pinnacle of a pseudo intellectual. No, 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 no. I think Solomonati, plain and simple, is just an idiot. He's a lunatic. But the point of the matter is, people like Solomonati should not be given the time or space to voice their opinions to such influential levels. Because I know Solomonati has a very strong influence from his genesis in the 2k community and just as a consecrator in general and y'all will look at his long sprees of vanishing and coming back as like the second coming of jesus or something that's very profound and but solomonati is just a conspiracy theorist jogging babbling idiot and the funny thing about that is that he doesn't even articulate himself in convincing manners don't even take what he says with a grain of salt don't even think about the salt just don't even listen to him. Just watch him just to laugh. You know what I mean? Now, usually I end these videos with like a montage at the end and a highlight of different things and cool music. But because I had to sit through multiple videos of Soluminati talking that bullshit, I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'm about to compile a completion video showing y'all the greatest highlights of Soluminati just saying random shit enjoy world is about to be under lockdown and they gonna paint the whole picture like it's our fault you gonna start to lose family and friends not dying some of y'all may have experienced some people in y'all family souls leave this matrix because the frequency and the vibration is changing a lot of people is getting sick a lot of people is under the vibration bro as soon as a girl starts shaking her ass in front of you you like a dog you like you at your, your, your lowest state of your consciousness bro when y'all watch these cartoons dragon ball z super saiyan levels different levels within you that shit is real you got different levels of your mind that and it's showing me that thousands and thousands of other people has high from it. And then you telling me I'm wrong because the doctor said that they ran tests and it's okay and you feel fine. You were the test that they ran. You are the test subject. You passed the first test. Now you need two more. But other people didn't pass it. They're testing their shit on you. You bot, bitch. But listen to me, y'all. The frequency and the vibration is changing on the planet. If you wanted the chosen ones, you already got food and shit stocked up. You already spiritually connected with the planet. All you need to do is keep focusing on yourself and keep having fun living life. Nine times out of ten, if you caught in that winter storm, you got food stocked up and water. You should be perfectly fine. You in a whole other level of mindset. You're not like these fucking bots. They left for dead. They don't know how to plant food. They don't know how to do nothing but depend on the government. The people that was waiting on stimulus checks. And it's not their fault. We supposed to be able to trust these motherfuckers. Bro, they are just food now. Because these, these is the last days, my nigga. And what I mean by last days? Last days, everybody talked about December 21st. Bitch, you supposed to be out here in nature taking care of yourself every fucking day like December tomorrow. Don't nobody know the exact day. Nobody. Not even me. Everybody, December 21st, we all know that within and dreams that something big is coming, but I guarantee you that shit gonna catch niggas slipping. Talk about this real quick. NPCs. NPCs, non-playable characters. Soulless beings. Empty vessels. They have no soul. Everybody got a spirit. Not everybody have a soul. All these celebrities you see, I told y'all since day one, most of these celebrities y'all look up to, been dead. They been gone. 
Bitch, we in the Matrix, my nigga. You sitting up here watching me record this video right now. How? I'm all the way across the fucking world. It's so much magic and superpowers that's going on right in front of you. I told y'all we only see 10% in the electromagnetic spectrum. You only see 10% with these two eyes. You don't know what the fuck is feeding off your energy right now.